A lot's been written and said lately about San Francisco bursting at the seams. It's clearly a good time for business, but that raises a lot of issues, not just of economic growth, but of public safety. Our next guest knows about both those things. Meet Ken Cleveland, member of the San Francisco Fire Commission and vice president of public policy for BOMA. Thank you very much for having me. Now, BOMA stands for Business Owners and Managers Association, correct? No, it's a building owners building. and managers. We represent the commercial real estate a community that houses the businesses in San Francisco. So now, you've been in that position for how long? 20 years. 20 years? Yeah, I know. So how many And I didn't have hair even when it started. I, I so. wasn't going to say that, yeah. Ken. You were going to date both of us. So. <laughs> I mean, how many booms and busts have you seen? Uh, several, actually, in this town. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're, we're currently blessed to be in a boom. We're currently blessed to have less than 5% unemployment, thousands of new people moving into town mm. every day. In fact, the average age now in San Francisco is something around 27. I know. So uh, that does date both of us. Yeah, I know it does. <laughs> yeah, to know that there huh. were people who were working that were like two when I moved here, it's yeah, really exactly, distressing. Exactly. But, we're, but with all this you know, in amazing economic growth, we have a lot of pushback in terms of high housing cost and, mm -hmm. and traffic congestion. And so the city's trying to grapple with that in many different ways. Well, I mean, you lead to my next question. I mean, you know, some people don't want to talk about that. They're like, oh, it's all, it's all rosy. It's all rosy. What do you say to people who say the glass isn't half full? It's kind of got a hole in the bottom. Well, I don't think you want to say, you, you don't want to have a hole in the bottom. You want to make sure that what you have is fixable, and I think we have a very good economy that can be fixed for the problems we have. Mm -hmm. So housing, I mean, we need to build more of it, of course. Moratoriums, the last thing we need to do is think about any mm -hmm. sort of moratorium. Build more housing of all levels, make it easier to do so. Uh, there was a, f a report that just came out from the Legislative Analyst Office uh, out of Sacramento just the other day, very unbiased report, said California in general, is underbuilding and has been underbuilding its housing for its workforce and for its people for right. over 30 years. Yeah, so we're, we're just one piece of the of a really larger, larger California problem well, it probably in terms even, of housing. It probably even a larger problem with other large cities in the U.S. Absolutely. But we have but it's mostly here in California with a lot of, uh, you know, we have a lot of nimbyism, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we love my what we backyard, love. And yeah. We move in. We don't want a lot of change. Right. I, um, want, to, I want to build my third story addition, but I don't want someone right. next door to block my view. And we do have a lot of nimbyism. We also have a lot of problems with the California, uh, you know, Environmental Quality Act. CEQA has been a big roadblock, a roadblock in mm -hmm. terms of, of uh, creating more housing and, and, and right. uh, allowing more development, uh, certainly along the coastal areas of the right. state. I had dinner the other night with a, a local business person whose name will go uh, unnamed, but he said, San Francisco is becoming the Manhattan of the West Coast. And I think I knew what he meant. I mean, there you have a constrained space surrounded by water, and it's expensive because there's no place to go. You think that's a fair assessment? Well, you know, there was a fight against the Manhattanization of San Francisco back in the 70s. And mm -hmm. there was a big push to try to kill the, the Transamerica Pyramid, which is now an icon for the city. <laughs> but in 1985, we did adopt a, a city general plan that concentrated all the high-rise commercial office buildings in a very small piece of the city down in the North Financial and South Financial districts. You know, And so those areas are zoned for high-rises, and that's where most of your development is, is going right built. now. And so it was smart planning then, and it's smart planning now. You want to have high-density development for commercial, and then you want to have high-density residential development along your transportation corridors in the city. Right. So Are you more sanguine about this boom than the last one? I mean, I remember it was my husband, who's in the tech industry, who when he saw a sign on Market Street, this was in the late 90s, for barbecue.com. He's like, why is someone <laughs> going to go online to buy a hibachi when I can walk into, you know, Walgreens? I think that uh, this particular boom is a lot more sound, it's more financially sound. You don't have a lot of people chasing VC money uh, for ideas that haven't been tested in the market. Right. Now you have these startups, which really are, they're taking money out of their own pockets. They're making a product or a service or a website or something. They're putting it out there. They're testing it. They're getting feedback. They're getting customers. And then it becomes a company. And then the VCs come in and say, you know what? That is an idea that has resonance. That has an idea. That is an idea that has legs in the market. So right. I'm going to help fund it. Right. So this this market is a lot stronger than it was 
in 1999. So you 2000. think it has more legs than the last? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you've been working in the business sector in San Francisco for how many years now? Well, 20 years in San 20 Francisco, years, before right. that in Washington, D.C. Um, did you ever, as an openly gay professional, run in a, up against what you considered bias in the workplace and your job? Never had that problem here in the Bay Area. I think the uh -huh. Bay Area has always been sort of welcoming for uh, alternative lifestyles, whatever you yeah. call it, or, or just, uh, you know, we, we, we appreciate and and uh, and uh, you know uh, uplift our diversity. I think that's a great thing, and we are blessed to have that. We mm -hmm. have that within the fire department. We have that within almost every city agency you can think of, and within the city as a whole, and certainly within the business community, very diverse. Right. Uh, you know, and so so I never had. A issue from day one right. uh, working here in the business community as a gay man. Now you have served in many positions uh, volunteer wise and in commissions and whatnot and now you're mm -hmm. a member of the San Francisco Fire Commission right. and you're also still on the board of the Alice P. Toklas LGBT, LGBT uh, Democratic, Democratic Club. Club. Right. Let's talk a little bit about though that part of your journey. What is it like to be a member of the Fire Commission? You're not the first gay commissioner but you're I the first one to launch. I think I'm the second. Yeah. First so one I'm in a long, in a long time. Most yes. people find this sort of stuff. I mean, is it, well, it's, it's not dull. Is it dull and boring working on fire commission stuff? No, unfortunately, <laughs> it's more work than you might imagine. The yeah. fire commission is a commission of five people. Uh, they're all appointed by the mayor, and uh, I was honored to be appointed by Mayor Lee about a year ago. So this is my first anniversary this month, in mm -hmm. fact, of being on the fire commission. Uh, there are about 1,555 people that work for the San Francisco Fire Department. It has a very storied history and proud past, as well as a vital function that it serves here in the city. Do you realize that almost 80 percent, 75 to 80 percent of your 911 calls in the city are not fire related, they're medical emergencies. Mm -hmm. So having our emergency medical services as part of our fire department is, it makes that fire department even more important to the city, mm -hmm. the city's residents. What are some of the big challenges facing the department? Well, budget, obviously, you know, we have a $350 million budget, but it's, it still doesn't address all the needs of the department. You know, some of the equipment's getting older, we need additional paramedics, and I think the mayor's office and certainly the administration is facing that and is putting those kind of requests on the table. Uh, so we'll be going into budget discussions uh, as you know, we've already started the budget discussions actually for fiscal year 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. uh, and there will be funding requests in there for additional uh, firefighters, for additional paramedics, uh, for additional arson investigators, mm -hmm. uh, for planners to help you know, create a strategic plan for the department, uh, for uh, IT upgrades. Uh, because uh, like many city departments, uh, our city, although we're at the, the doorstep of Silicon Valley, many of our city departments are woefully behind the times in terms of, of, of utilizing yeah. and utilizing technology. Yeah, you would think it's, it's like that old adage, the, the cobbler's yeah. son has no shoes. San Francisco we, is ahead of the tech industry. It, and but here we are, our yeah. own city departments are really behind the eight ball. Uh, in many technology uh, areas. So uh, so those are the kinds of things we'll be looking at in terms of trying to supplement the, the department's budget moving forward. Is this new economic boom putting even more pressure on the department? Absolutely. The call, the frequency of calls has certainly had a major uptick. Uh, you know, you know the homeless problem. Is, you know, is 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 sort of a very difficult problem for any urban area, but it's it's certainly a problem for us here in the city. And mm -hmm. and many times uh, those 911 calls are addressing a problem with somebody on the street. Right. We've just got a few moments left, but I want to talk to you about your work with the Alice Club. How long sure. have you been a member? Gosh, well, I've been a member off and on for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. Some cities would be lucky to have one yeah, LGBT. We have, two. We, we, yeah. we have two. What is it that sets you two apart? Well, I think that Alice is a, a little more structured than the Harvey Milk Club. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very deliberative in, in our process for reaching consensus in terms of who we back for, for candidates mm -hmm. or what propositions we support or, uh, or oppose. We have a very deliberative process, uh, a, a, a very inclusive process. We have a large board probably 40 people on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, we meet frequently and we are very focused on doing the work. So if you get an endorsement from Alice, we will work that endorsement. We will right. pamphlet, you know, put the pamphlets out, we'll put the signs up, we'll put the billboards up. Uh, Alice puts their money where their mouth is. Right. And, uh, so it's, it, it's a worthy organization because of it, but you don't join Alice and get on their board without knowing you're going to have to do some work. Right, it's a working board. It's a working board, yeah. absolutely. Last question, with regards to BOMA, Building Owners and sure. Managers mm -hmm. Association, what is something you would like the average San Franciscan to know about what you do? 
I think a lot. I think it's one of those groups. Even I, I introduced you as business owners. You know, <laughs> you, people get Boma mixed up all well, the time with other groups. You have to realize if you own a piece of property in San Francisco, many, many city agencies and departments touch mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You know, fire department, police department, planning, building, DPW. Parks and Rec, you never know uh, what agency is going to be tapping on your door health department for a permit or a problem or something. So I'm kind of that interface between the buildings, most of your downtown office buildings, and city, city government. And so when they have a problem, they call me and say, Ken, can you help me with that food truck in front of my building? Yeah, so th that's where the years of meditation have come into play. And that's <laughs> where I lost my hair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Putting, putting a friendly, proactive <laughs> face on building owners you in need San Francisco. An, you need somebody to engage for you because, frankly, they're too busy running their buildings and making yeah. sure the thousands of people that are working in that building uh, you know, get the, get the, you know, are taken care of. So they can't really deal with running down to City Hall yeah. or running over the DPW. That's why they have me. Well, thanks for running under the dome for us. It's my pro my pleasure. Thank We've you. been speaking to Ken Cleveland. Next up, we're going to speak with Kate Kendall about what certain court cases, what certain decisions, for instance, in Indiana, mean for the LGBT community and just how soon or if we will get marriage equality nationwide. I'll be right back.